Good evening, and welcome to the first in a series of three live debates this week here on PLG TV 13. I'm Matthew Fogel, along with Forrest Berkshire, the editor of the Kentucky Standard and Kentucky Standard reporter, Casey Good, who is doing her first live debates, along with myself. Forrest is our veteran among the PLG moderating panel tonight. But regardless, we're going to do the best we can, not only for the candidates in the studio tonight, but for you, the citizens. Our debate this week consists of three races that are contested in Nelson County for the primary election coming up on Tuesday, May the 20th. Those races are all on the Democratic side and include the magistrate in District 4 and the Nelson County Sheriff and the race for tonight's debate, Nelson County Clerk. And we have with us in the studio this evening the two candidates on the Democratic ballot for Nelson County Clerk, Jeanette Hall Sidebottom and Elaine Filiatru. And we will pause right now for them to give salutations to each other. Tonight's debate will consist of three minutes from each candidate for opening statements, then questions from our panel for two-minute responses from each candidate, and then we'll have closing remarks from each candidate as well. We also have a citizen question. Actually, we have two citizen questions sent in to plg at plgtv.com that we will also ask. We have designated the order of the opening and closing statements with a toss of a U.S. quarter. And the candidate who won that toss had the choice of opening first or second, noting that the same order will be done for the closing remarks so that someone doesn't have the advantage of both speaking first in the opening and speaking last in the closing. The winner of that coin toss this evening was Jeanette Hall Sidebottom, who has chosen to give her opening statement second. So now, opening remarks from Elaine Filiatru. Thank you. Thank you, PLG, for the opportunity to be here. My husband and best friend is John Filiatro. We own and operate Filiatro Family Farms in partnership with our children, their spouses, and their children. My highest priority and most serious commitment next to my spiritual life is my family. Jay, married to Becky O'Daniel, is manager of Filiatro Family Farms. He's a member of the local conservation board and works with 4-H and various other ag groups in Nelson County and statewide. Katie, married to Rob Martin, is counselor at Largestown Middle School. Jan, married to Marlon Howard, is bookkeeper at Bethlehem High School. Kip, married to Letitia Bowers, is employed by Philcon Construction. And Jude, married to Aaron Werner, is a Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Engineer. I'm a member of St. Joe Church, graduated from Bethlehem Academy, earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Education from Nazareth College. I taught for a year at Bethlehem High School, was co-owner and operator of a small business here in Bardstown for 12 years, then served as deputy clerk for 27 years under Phyllis Mattingly, working at one time in all departments within the uh, clerk's office, but primarily serving as elections clerk and as fiscal court clerk. In 2011, I took office as Nelson County Clerk. The challenge of taking over as Nelson County Clerk in 2011 was that I was following the irreplaceable Phyllis Mattingly. My goal then as now was to make certain that Nelson Countyans who come into the office are served well. First and foremost, our staff must do their work accurately and according to statute. Secondly, staff must smile as they take customers' uh, tax money and their fees. We live in an imperfect world. We are imperfect people. But our mission is to do our job well and in a pleasant atmosphere. That's what we have worked toward. I believe that that's what we have accomplished. The office is about quality and qualification. We provide the quality service. I have the qualifications to serve. I have loved doing the job of Nelson County Clerk. We have conscientious, bright, and wonderful staff. We've moved forward with improvements to our office, both in system and in the facility. We've met several challenges and survived. It has been an honor and a joy to serve in this position. I hope to continue my service as Nelson County Clerk and to lead the office through the next four years of service. With that in mind, I'm asking the citizens of Nelson County for their vote on May 20th. And now we'll have opening remarks from Jeanette Hall Sidebottom. Hello. 
I am Jeanette Hall Sidebottom. I am a candidate for the Nelson County Clerk. After being contacted by several individuals asking me to run for office, I decided to run. My main interest is to serve the citizens of Nelson County. I am here to give Nelson County a choice. I am the daughter of Mary Lula Greenwell Hall and the late Curly Hall. I am married to Mike Sidebottom, and we've been married for 18 years. We have two children, Jenna Ray and Jordan. I have a solid background in customer service. I am confident and energetic. I can and I will accept criticism. I feel it helps me learn. I have a great leadership and people skills, and I love being around people. I get things done with little direction. I am motivated and focused. I am determined to get the job done well and on time, and I'm not afraid to roll up my sleeves to work, and I'm always willing to learn. I feel no one is correct 100% of the time. I can work with all personalities and people skills. I have found out that the workplace has a variety of different personalities, and each one has their own strengths. When you realize and recognize these differences, you will see that it's easier to come together to get the job done. Actually, when I first started at the clerk's office, I wasn't so sure about an office environment. I had never worked in an office. So at the same time, I was offered a job at another location, and I actually took that job, but continued working Saturdays for Phyllis. I did it for like three weeks. Phyllis asked me to come back full time. I accepted, and I stayed for 12 years. I feel it is important to treat your employees as if they make a difference, and that employee will make a difference. My public involvement includes the Nelson County Youth Soccer Coach, Adopt a Highway Program, Boston Elementary PTA President, Nelson County Project Graduation and Booster Club, Thomas Nelson Project Liftoff, I'm a sponsor for St. Jude Research, and I'm a member of the Nelsonville Church, and I love to read. Customer service will be my number one priority, responsibility and accountability. There are three steps that I will follow. I will identify my duties, I will understand my duties, and I will fulfill my duties. I do feel that education is important, however, work ethics and people skills are just as important. I bring with me 12 years experience as a deputy clerk, 10 years under Phyllis Mattingly, and two years under the current clerk, which is a total of 12 years working the front line at the clerk's office prior to accepting a supervisor position at NOI Packaging Group. This new position has given me the ability to continue my leadership skills as a leader versus a follower. I was employed at Interlock Packaging for 12 years before my employment with Phyllis Mattingly and was really excited to be so well thought of to be asked to return. I've experienced and balancing reports. I'm in charge of shipping numerous shipments out of the country. This paperwork has to be 100% correct before crossing the border. Within a year of doing these shipments, I have completed every shipment with very few discrepancies. I will not have a problem maintaining a well-balanced budget. I manage a warehouse on a daily basis. I also manage the shipping department when needed. I am currently training in the scheduling department. I feel all of my qualifications and experience will make me a better county clerk. Thank you. All right, we'll go two minutes each on these answers, um, and uh, we will flip the order for this answer, so uh, it will be Jeanette answering first and Elaine answering second on this question. And uh, we're gonna go to the Kentucky Standard reporter, Casey Good. Thank you. Um, this question is for both candidates. Um, if you could only choose one, what would you make your top priority? And as you both said, you, um, you one of your priorities is customer service and serving the citizens. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more and the other priorities you may have? My number one priority will be customer service. That office is about people. It will not be about politics. It is, you deal with people all day long. You deal with strangers of people all day long. They are there to pay money. No one likes to spend money. No one likes to be treated nasty. With me as your leader, I promise you, you will be treated with respect. And you will have a smile with every transaction. Customer service is, is high priority, but doing, doing that customer service 
with friendliness and with efficiency and correctly is a top priority. A customer who gets a smile but has his transaction done improperly is not, at the end of the day, a happy customer. The matter uh, <coughs> of fact is that uh, the county clerk's office at this point in time does greet each and every customer with uh, extreme courtesy and with extreme friendliness. Uh, the girls extend themselves quite graciously to all customers. Uh, the other part of that part of customer service is that those folks who come in do have to pay money, but they absolutely have to know that our job is done properly while we do it. All right, thank you. And uh, we will have Elaine answer this next question first, followed by Jeanette. And uh, we will go to the Kentucky Standard Editor for the Berkshire. This question is for both candidates. Uh, one key, while we're on the theme of customer service, uh, one key to, to providing good customer service is minimizing the time people stand in line when, for example, you know, they're in there to renew their car tax. Um, a lot of that involves having enough staff to handle the walk-in traffic. In 2011, the clerk's office was approved to spend $463,000 on salaries for deputy clerks. Uh, in 2014, that number was up to $510,000. In your opinion, is staffing adequate to meet customers' needs, or would more deputy clerks improve the public experience? I do believe that the staffing as it is at this moment is adequate. Uh, the, the problem in the county clerk's office is that you, from one moment to the next, you really do not know what you, your uh, customer base is going to be. We, we know from experience that Mondays and Fridays are busy days. We also know from experience that uh, the lunch hour is, is busy. We've tried to work uh, the staff we have to be able to either come in a little later, uh, part of those girls come in a half an hour later than the other part, uh, we take a little bit shorter lunch hour and try to uh, flex out the lunch hours as much as we can. However, we also have to uh, abide by all the labor laws that are in place. So it does present a little bit of a problem. The other issue there is that we have so much equipment, and that's it. You know, you have six computers, then there's no point in having seven girls. Uh, our experience right now is that we have, we have more than plenty of staff to take care of customers' needs, even on our very, very busiest times, uh, the girls that are in place right now get those customers in and out with the minimum of a wait. In this county, you do not wait for service in the clerk's office unless you're coming in at the very end of a, a given month and most especially at the end of March when all the prep plays are due. So I think we're in pretty good shape. The other part about the question of the budget is we are budgeted for that much money, but we do not spend that much money on, on our staff. Okay, and uh, response from Jeanette Hall Sidebottom. Okay, I agree with having the deputy clerk available that when you come into that office at lunchtime or a busy period, you have six computers, you have six windows on that front line. I feel all six windows should be operated. If there's ever a time that you cannot do that, then that would be the time that, yes, well, you will have to hire another deputy. It may not have to be a full-time deputy, but at those important times, at the end of the month, through lunch, at the end of the day, you have to have those windows filled with deputies that are ready to do the transactions and do the transactions well. Uh, they need to do them correct, and they need to do them with a smile on their face. That is what public service is for. Okay, and if any candidates uh, want to uh, respond, um, just let us know to, to any of those. I don't know. Um, and we'll, we'll let you speak. Okay, go ahead, Address Lane. the fact that uh, part-time help is a good idea. Training in that office is exceptionally difficult with all the types of transactions that are, that are held. It's not an excuse. Uh, it's just not a practical matter to, bring a per to try to think that you can bring a person in uh, just for a few minutes or, or a few hours even during a week time. Uh, we don't have waits 
ex as I said, there are very, very few waits. We know when our busy times are. We do try to staff to accommodate those. We actually pull girls from other areas of the office if we get extremely busy at a given moment, and especially when we get loaded with dealer work. So that takes a, a, a one clerk completely off uh, of, of the staff. So I think we've addressed our issues with staffing quite, quite well, truthfully. Sometimes I disagree with bringing another clerk from another department into the front line doing transactions that they're really not used to doing. I was talking with a voter uh, just the other day who had gotten two registration, voter registration cards. They lived at the same house, but they were going to vote at two different places. I feel if you're going to have someone work in that department, that person has to be 100% trained in that department. I do agree with cross-training to a certain extent, but I feel like the person that's going to stay in this one side, either whether it's the front line, whether it's voter registration, whether it's downstairs at the records, need to be trained 100% in that area. Okay, and that actually does lead into the, to the next question. So, um, Jeanette, we will have you answer this um, first and then Elaine. Um, this question is based on one submitted to, uh, to our email. Uh, we asked people to submit questions over the past couple of days, and Mary from Bardstown submitted this. With so many different divisions within one office, how do you accomplish good customer service in the standard of good customer service? Is that, is that different depending on which departments you're talking about? Jeanette, go ahead. My thing is with customer service, that office is for people. If you do not have the personality to be on that front line, you do not belong on that front line. However, there is probably another assignment that you will be able to do. The front line is the first thing that those customers see walking through that door. They have to see a smiling face. If not, they're, I mean, a smiling face would eliminate if they have to come back again. They could be in the worst mood get up there, see a smiling face, and like one of the, I've talked to, talk to several people, he forgets about being in a bad mood. Once he sees that smiling face, it's all it takes. There's a way you can tell someone, no, I cannot do your transaction. You have to go get this. You have to go get that. But do it with a smile on your face. People understand. There, there's no way they know exactly what they need when they come in that clerk's office. But just to be told, no, I cannot do it without looking into something, you have to take your time. You have to, if you have a question, you call Frankfurt. They, they're always available to help. You just have to be willing to do it. And like I said, if you can't do that kind of work, there is other work available. But when I take over as clerk, there will be detailed training for anyone that comes in to work in customer service. All right, and the uh, response from Elaine. Well, I think you get the insinuation that, that uh, we live sort of in a nightmare world in that clerk's office. Uh, we actually provide extremely competent, good service to the customers who come into that office. Uh, there is never going to be a place that I work or Jeanette works or you work that, that does not have an occasional mistake, and there are mistakes. Our girls address the problems of those customers who come in, and they do it well. Uh, customer service throughout that entire office is as important in one department as it is in the other. Uh, and, I, and I really need to address the issue with the voter registration. We have a clerk who is in charge of voter registration. No single uh, employee can be on site at all times. We make mistakes in assigning precincts occasionally, and we made a mistake that was corrected. That, that mistake can be, we normally go back and check our list of streets to make sure that, uh, that we have not misplaced a voter, but uh, occasionally one will get by us. Those things are easily corrected. If not from a phone call, then it will be corrected uh, at the time of the, the election. Uh, for, because of driver's licensing and the way that uh, voter registrations occur now, you can have a husband who's gone and, and gotten his driver's license 
and a wife who didn't. And of course it's going to put them in two different uh, polling places. We can make mistakes assigning polling places, and we have made a few, very few. So uh, the idea that a, the girl uh, in our office, the girl who is mostly in charge of elections, is one of the best at waiting uh, on customers for vehicles. The, our bookkeeper is one of the most knowledgeable uh, girls in our office when it comes to waiting on people. So the idea that you cannot do various jobs in that office is, is just a little misleading. All right. For the next question, we'll go to Kentucky Standard reporter Casey Good. Thank you. This question is for Ms. Sidebottom. Um, Ms. Deliatri may respond um, afterwards if she wishes. Ms. Sidebottom, you have uh, you talked about concerns with service and training and availability. Are there any other problems you see with the current setup of the county clerk's office? And can you describe what you would do to fix those? Well, there's always room for improving. As technology changes, we have to change. Everything has to be effective. Um, as long as you get things done in a timely manner, there's not a whole lot you can change in that office. It, it's just, you just have to have the customer service. Uh, other than that, the office runs pretty much on its own. I mean, all the employees know what they have to do. It's just getting it done in a timely manner with, like I said, a smile on your face. It's not that hard to smile. That's one of the easiest jobs of the clerk's office or any job that you have. There's a way, like I said, that you can have the hapless person come to your window. A smile on your face will change change his attitude. You don't have to deal with him. They don't have to deal with you. It just makes the transaction easier. Okay, Elaine, do you have any uh, response to what Jeanette just said, or um, do you see any problems with the current setup yourself that that have been problems that you've been trying to, to fix? No, I, actually, we we don't have issues with the courtesy and the friendliness that customers are greeted with. There is not a problem there. It, no one is in the world's greatest mood every single day of the, of the, the week, month, year. Uh, our big problem, actually, in that office is more of a logistics uh, problem. The office is designed so that folks come in a door, and we have to have them stand in a line in order that they get served first uh, as they as they arrive in the office. So uh, it's a little difficult at times for some of the clerks to see. They're, they're up and down uh, all day long. We have actually installed some mirrors in order to, to uh, alleviate some of the problem there. But uh, that's a minor thing, really, when it comes to customer service. Uh, we Our in, entire goal for the last several years has been to make sure that those customers are greeted with um, as much friendliness as is possible. And I do think our girls have quite on top of that. It's a little insulting, really, when as, as hard as they try to basically have, uh, you know, it insinuated that possibly that's not the case. All right. With the next question, we go to Forrest Berkshire. Ms. Miliatro, uh, this question is for you. Uh, Ms. Sidebottom, you may respond afterward if you wish. Uh, Ms. Filiatro, you're, in the near, uh, you're nearing the end of your first term as county clerk. What would you characterize as the biggest accomplishment made to the clerk's office during your tenure? In truth, I think we've really accomplished several of the goals that I expressed that I wanted to accomplish when we I, – we've actually – uh, exceeded some of the things that I thought we might do. Um, our deeds and uh, records in the basement, our, our recording department was, I refer to that as a dungeon. It was a dungeon. Uh, we, with the help of Nelson Fiscal Court and with several county employees and with our own staff, we managed to get that place remodeled and uh, new lighting, and it's now a decent place to work. Uh, and for people to come in and, and, and do business. Uh, the recent re-precincting, the reapportionment that we have just gone through has kept us literally buried in work since January. And part of the reason for that is that it was a massive undertaking. Part of the reason is that we 
were held up by state legislature, and part of it is that we were held up by the State Board of Elections. So the fact that we managed to get through that re-precincting and reapportionment with our heads still on our shoulders is quite an accomplishment, as a matter of fact. And uh, we know that if not every voter in this county is happy because of, of their uh, reassignment of precinct, but uh, it was a job that was done with the taxpayer in mind and as, as best as, as we could manage to get through it. The other thing is our uh, recording uh, system that we have put in in the recording department in the basement. We've saved the taxpayer thousands, and I'm, I'm seriously thousands of dollars. And I'm quite proud of the fact that we went moved forward with that, that we've made uh, access to those records so much easier for those customers that come in. Ms. Seidemann, do you have a response? Well, I do agree with Elaine. The basement looks great. It's a great work area. But I think the work still got done the way Phyllis had it. Phyllis had built Phyllis had built a, I'm not sure how I want to say it, a great relation, working relationship with the public. That I do agree with Elaine. The basement is great now for the people that comes in to use it, mainly the attorneys uh, and their secretaries. I hate to talk about a whole lot of technology because then it gets into taxpayers' money. I do see technology does change. And as it changes, you will have to purchase more. Hopefully, you can get some grants as you're looking into, um, as you're looking at purchasing whatever you need to purchase. But I look at it: if it's not broke, do not. It, it doesn't have to be fixed. Okay. Any response? I think I would like to say that it wasn't that it was broken. Uh, the systems that were, there was there was nothing wrong with the systems we had in place, but technology does change, and it does mean that you move forward. Um, the equipment that was in the office prior to our system was leased equipment. It cost a bundle of money. We have pretty much a system now that does the same job, but it does it much more efficiently. It uh, saves time and labor on the part of our clerks, and we are just so much better off with the, the job that has to be done, making sure that that job is done. As far as customer service, they, customers can come in and get deeds, mortgages, copies of, of that information at the snap of a finger now. They don't have to go back and pull out books. Uh, so uh, it's an improvement, and it is a, it's been a money-saving improvement, a huge money-saving improvement. All right, we have another question submitted by a viewer. Once again, we solicited uh, viewers over the past couple of days to, to email us at plg at plgtv.com. And this is another question submitted to that email. This question comes from Dan Austin of Bardstown, and uh, this is directed to Ms. Sidebottom. Uh, just a note to our viewers, um, the county clerk's office estimates that it will bring in $11.5 million in receipts this coming year. So, Ms. Sidebottom, in the Kentucky Standard, you said you, quote, feel, unquote, like you could balance and maintain a budget. What are your qualifications when it comes to balancing and maintaining a large budget? Okay. A budget is the way you plan it. You decide what is needed. You organize your expenses. You take your regular expenses. You take your various expenses. You track your spending versus your income. You subtract your expenses from your income. If it's negative, you have unnecessary spending. If it balances, you're good. It's as simple as that. It's, I know it's a lot. It's a big money budget, but it, it runs the same as you would do your budget at home. It's as simple as taking what you need, what, you need, what your income is, minus it. It's black and white. Okay. Any response, Ms. Filiatra? Well, actually, the county clerk budget is the income from those tax dollars that we collect day in and day out. It's the income from the recording fees that we track day in and day out. It's not a, an arbitrary piece of work that you put together and hope that you come out ahead at the end of the day. We, we by way of educated uh, 
work, actually, know what we did last year as far as uh, income from usage tax. We know what is income from recording fees. We know what's income from the various and sundry things. It is the income. We also know what we percentage of, of that income we pay out to school districts and to the county and to the state fees that we typically send to Frankfurt, usage tax fees that we send to Frankfurt. It's, it's not a simple budget. We, it has to be based on where that money is allotted through the uh, transactions we do from day to day. Do you all realize that every instrument that is recorded in the basement has a $6, I believe, fee for what the government has set up, or Kentucky government has set up as affordable housing. We have to account for every one of those $6 fees. We have to account for every $2 clerk fee that goes through that office. So it's divided into the divisions that, that is, uh, legally has been separated. Um, at the end of the year, every year we have three audits. So uh, that the budget is, is, is a working piece of, uh, of finance that, uh, that, that goes through, actually, it's approved by fiscal court. Uh, you mentioned our, the payroll. We make an estimate of what we'll need for payroll and add a little to it so that we don't get into trouble. Uh, this is, it's, it's a very, very complicated piece of, of work. Jack, any response? Okay. I'm sure it is a complicated budget, but you have to take control of your budget plan. It is subject to change based on the economy and unexpected circumstances. You have to be ready for new strate strategies, and you will be ready for new strategies. All you have to do is monitor your performance by doing your daily reports. Yes, Ms. Billy. The fact of the matter is that, that the budget for the Nelson County Clerk's Office is put together. It is presented to Nelson Fiscal Court. Uh, if we vary from that budget, then we must go back to Nelson Fiscal Court for an amendment. And, and that can be done, but it's not just a, a matter of it's that easy to walk into fiscal court and make an amendment. No, so you want to know what the line items are in that budget. You want it as nearly correct as possible, and uh, you want to, to allow a little give and take both ways so that, uh, so that at the end of the year, that budget is in order. All right, we're actually going to stay on the budget uh, for this next question. And uh, Elaine, uh, Elaine Filiatru, will answer this one first, so followed by Jeanette Hall Sidebottom. And uh, we'll go to Forrest Berkshire for it. All right, now stick with me because this is kind of a long question, but I feel that it is an important one. Um, and we are staying on the topic of the budget. And this question is for both candidates. Uh, the county clerk's office is, is responsible for operating on the fees it collects. Uh, yet the clerk has little authority, if any, to actually set the fee rates. Uh, most of those are controlled by state law. Uh, and then any excess fees that the office collects goes back to county government. This year's county clerk's budget is projecting about $368,000 that will, it will generate in excess fees. My question for both candidates is could those excess fees be better used to improve the clerk's operation rather than going back into the general fund either used in hiring more deputies or investing in further equipment or technology? Well, part of, of uh, the reason that we, tr we try to manage our money as if it were, I like to, to say that I like to manage that money as if it were mine, and I'm fairly tight-fisted. Uh, the state provides a good part of the equipment that we use upstairs with the vehicles. We actually bought the recording system ourselves, and it's, it's, it's as good as, as we can, can use for the moment. Uh, we, t we are just fortunate in Nelson County that we have the excess fees. That we're, it's a luxury that most clerks do not have, as a matter of fact. But, uh, you know, the amount of ability that we have to spend whatever monies we have is controlled by that budget that we put out in January. Uh, we give ourselves enough operating money. We feel if we needed more, we could go to, to, to the fiscal court and uh, try to get that budget amended. And 
As, as a matter of fact, we have a very cooperative relationship uh, between fiscal court and our office. So I feel pretty confident that uh, that we're using what fees that we take in to the best of our ability. We budget to manage the office reasonably well. I, honestly, if we need a piece of equipment, we are budgeted so that we can purchase that, and we do. But I certainly don't believe in ex spending fees that we collect that is taxpayer money that can be better used if it can be put to the road fund or to something that the county needs. And, uh, and occasionally the county also puts in some help with our office to, uh, for example, they paid for the remodeling of the basement. So our fees in effect paid for that. Uh, I, I do believe we, we manage that budget quite um, efficiently and, and quite well. All right, and a response from Jeanette Hall Sidebottom. Okay, I'm going to still stick with you have to take control of your budget plan. As I said, with technology changing, we will change. As of right now, from I haven't been in the clerk's office for a while, but when I was there, I think there's enough clerks. You do not have to hire enough clerks. You just have to get on the training that's needed to do these transactions in a timely manner. But as far as the budget, and as much money as you can save and turn back over to the people of Nelson County, it's great. It's their money. But I agree with Elaine. If you have to purchase something, you have to purchase something. But you need to do your research and see what kind of grants and what all is provided from the state that they can maybe work with that office. And I will do my research before spending any kind of the taxpayer's money. Ms. Seibot, I just want to follow up on that. Um, you said that you need to take control of your budget. One of the difficulties, I would think, with running the clerk's office is that you don't have a whole lot of control over the budget. If, if fiscal court um, approves your budget, if the state sets how much fees you can you can collect. I was just kind of curious if you could elaborate a little bit more on how you would take control of, of, of your own budget. I mean, anything is subject to change. The economy, unexpected circumstances. Maybe I'm trying to say you will have to put into your budget for these. You just have to look ahead. You have to be prepared for this because changes happen. Everybody knows changes happen. I say by just being prepared and monitor your performances. All right. Any response? About all I can say about that is we do have a fiscally sound budget. We we determine our needs at the beginning of a year uh, based uh, quite often on the occurrences of the year before. Uh, I think our budget, uh, our budgetary planning is quite good, as a matter of fact. And, uh, I think we're extremely fiscally responsible responsible in that we do manage to uh, to come up at the end of the year with enough funding that we can help the citizens who pay that money in. So um, our budgeting is, uh, is, is very good. We get audited, as I said before, quite uh, every year. And the, I, as far as I know this year, the auditors are really searching for, for a reason to give us some criticism. I don't think they found a thing this year. So uh, we're quite satisfied with the way we're operating and, and uh, I'm very proud of the girls who put their time and effort into making things work properly. Okay, this this will do it for the uh, for the questions about the budget. Ms. Seibaum, you have any last thing to say about the budget? I'm fine. Okay. All right, so we'll go on to this next question uh, from Kentucky Standard reporter Casey Good. This question is for both candidates. Um, one of the major responsibilities of county clerk is carrying on elections and uh, working with poll workers. And it seems that a lot of poll workers are of retirement age. Is there anything that the county clerk can do to recruit younger poll workers and to get younger people involved with the local civ civic process? And do you think it's important to get younger people involved um, locally and why? Jeanette will answer this one first. I do feel that it's uh, 
necessary to have the younger generation involved because like you said most of the people or the majority of the people are at retirement age which do a great job they they put a hundred percent I've not really dealt a whole lot with the election department but what I've seen they, they do a hundred percent at their job it would be great to have the younger generation in I know it, it's everyone has to work nowadays it would have to be something that you would probably have to compens compensate them well. I'm not sure what you pay a poll worker. Like I said, I didn't deal with it a lot, but um, that's what you look into. That's that's yeah. I, I do agree with the younger generation getting involved in and in with it. All right, and a response from Elaine Fliatcher. Well, the election officers that are in place right now, several are right. are, are have a little uh, bit of age. But then again, so does the county club. <laughs> so, um, we've, we've received uh, some interest from some younger folks here in the last couple of years, and it's just really great to get the young folks involved. However, most of the, the, um, the people who are uh, interested even are college or college age students, possibly seniors in high school. Um, they, if you're in interest, you know, as, as the world is today, the young folks are not interested in getting up at 5.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning, actually getting up at 4.30 in order to get to the polls by 5.15. Uh, they're not interested in putting in a 12, 14-hour day, and there is a, a fee of payment for that. That also is approved by, by Nelson Fiscal Court. It's a little over 100 and, between $115 and $120 for the day. Uh, they have to come to a training, so it's uh, most of the time it's a matter of time. You know, you have to have a person who is free to do the job, and you have to have a person who is willing to do the job, and you have to have a person, more importantly than anything, who is going to do that job and do it properly and as they are trained, which is another requirement of an election officer. So it would be wonderful if you could get young folks involved in um, in participating in the election process. But our experience is that uh, they're few and far between, truthfully. Yeah, coming up on 5 a.m., the app on the iPhone just suddenly doesn't work for the young people. So, all right, so uh, this next question, uh, Elaine Affiliatru uh, will answer first, followed by Jeanette Sidebottom, and uh, we'll go to Forrest Berkshire. This question is for both candidates. In the Internet age, many county clerks, but certainly not all, have moved to, ma have moved to make public documents accessible online. Some of them op are, have others open for free, while others charge for online access. Currently, Nelson County charges a monthly subscription fee of $40 to access public land records online. Should individuals also be able to access public records online, and do you feel they should be charged $40 if they only want to access one record one time? Also, only land records are available online to someone paying for the service but many other public records still require a trip to the clerk's office. Should more public records be made available online? I really was interested in addressing this question tonight because uh, we, uh, we have put our records online for commercial purposes. Kentucky statute uh, has a variation in what you can do for private use and what you can do, for, you can charge for commercial commercial use. Uh, one of my big goals at the very beginning of, uh, of getting into this computer system that we have in the basement now was to make those records available for those people who needed those as uh, professionals, for title searchers and bankers and uh, attorneys who are doing uh, research. But I personally am not particularly interested in putting those records out there uh, for anyone who wants to go in and, and, and uh, look for, for valid reasons. I've, I've heard from many folks throughout the county, and they, and they, are not, they do not want all the records that apply to them uh, on the Internet, even though they are public records. We recognize that they are public records. They're available in our office for viewing. Now, we've had what I'm going to call a little uh, hitch in our get-along because we have had an attorney who, who has challenged the, our uh, right, basically, to charge the subscription fee based on Kentucky statute. Kentucky statute that deals with this was written, written 
back probably in the 70s and 80s. It's in terminology that is, in today's world, not even understandable. So, so we are trying to address this and, and to leave this system up for those who need it. But uh, we're not we're actually certain if we can delve through the costs for us and be able to justify charging that subscription uh, as the law is written today. The law is antiquated. So we are working on that. Uh, I, I am perfectly, we have saved uh, title searchers a ton of money, I honestly believe, because we've lost all our copy revenue in the process of, uh, of doing this, and our copy revenue was quite high. So we really hope to work through that, but if we can't, uh, we probably will discontinue that service until we can resolve the issues that are involved in it. As for putting that information out there for the world, uh, I have some issues with that, and I do understand totally. The big counties around us do. I think that one or two of them are going to regret it before all is said and done. Some of them have various reasons for doing so. But uh, I, I personally am not favorable as far as just putting it out there in the open. All right, and a response from Jeanette Hall Sidebottom. My outlook on uh, the records being online is as our county is getting bigger, that's less traffic that's in your office. That's less people dealing with these old deeds. These, the deed books are, are huge. They're old. You have to take care of them. So, I, I mean, it would be something that maybe I would look at as the county got bigger and, and maybe more funding from the state. I'm not sure what they would offer to help you with. But I, I think the less traffic that you have dealing with these deed books and wheels and it's, it's just a click of the button, depending on the cost, like I said, as the county gets bigger, I think maybe it would be something to look into. All right, is that a brief reply? And one comment about that. You know, the deed books that we're that are being referenced right now are not available online. It takes a, a lot of time, and actually, it's a quite a bit of expense to get all that information into the computer systems. And some of these old deed books that we're talking, really older deed books, we can't pull apart and scan. So we'll, we'll have to hire somebody to come in and, and actually scan those books. And then we'll have to uh, go back into an indexing system that's, that's uh, much more difficult than the, the stuff that we scan in day to day. So it's not a, a real, real simple issue. So we've scanned back to 1984 on most of our records. Uh, I think there are more than deeds and mortgages in those records that are available. But uh, if not, I know marriage licenses are probably going to go on if they're not already on. This is a work in progress, and uh, it, it, part of it is for the ease of search. We have computers in our office where folks can go down and look at anything that's in those uh, computers right now. But it's a work in progress. It takes a lot of time. It takes quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of uh, clerk uh, work to get those things scanned. Our problem is that what we do for our office and what we do for commercial uh, are so intermingled that it's difficult to pull out the cost that could apply to each of those uh, functions within the office. All right, and uh, 50 minutes flies by, so we're going to go now to closing statements, and uh, we will have three minutes on these closing statements, and uh, we will have Elaine Deliatro go first, followed by Jeanette Hall Sidebottom. Well, thank you for this opportunity, and I hope uh, that I've, I have managed to explain some of the functions of the clerk's office within a reasonable uh, understanding. I expressed several goals when I ran for county clerk four years ago. First, as a service office, I wanted to make certain that capable staff work in a pleasant atmosphere and provide our customers with competent, friendly, efficient service. Although we've lost deputy clerks to illness and to their desire to move to other employment, our newer clerks have been trained to do their jobs properly, and they provide the excellent customer service that they've been trained to provide, including an extra bit of understanding and compassion when situations warrant that. Cross-training to the various office departments has been high priority, and I feel confident now that each division within the office can be staffed by more than one employee, 
this as a safeguard should something happen to any one of those employees. Second, four years ago, I stated my goal that as a that that as a goal, I wanted to continue to implement and update technology already in place in the clerk's office. We wrote specs and advertised for bids. We converted the computer system in the recording department to a modern system that expedites the process for recording and index, indexing, and it makes searching for records uh, much simpler. The added bonus is that we have saved thousands of taxpayer dollars in the past two years, dollars that help support Nelson County's general fund. We also added a delinquent tax program so that that work is expedited. Uh, our office bookkeeper is using upgraded software. She knows the program, understands the concepts, and we are all well prepared for annual audits. State updates include a new voter registration system that's going online, and we are now in the process of training to work that system, as well as the CAVIS system that uh, should be implemented someday if the state techs get that taken care of, and we have to assign trainers for that job. I promised I would do my best to assure that historic records in our keeping were cared for and safe. We began, thanks to be being blessed with an expert archivist and a trained historian, to identify, index, and repair many of the old records but sadly, both uh, we lost our archivist unexpectedly dying. We lost his personality and his expertise. Marilyn Moore conti continues to work as time permits while she helps those doing research among our records. Our recording department, as we mentioned prior, we, uh, referred to as the dungeon, is now a fairly nice, bright place to work, much more conducive to pleasant working. And fourth, I stated four years ago that my mantra is and has always been respect, respect, respect. I wish for respect for all who enter those doors to the county clerk's office, both staff and customers. We've worked hard for happy employees who serve cheerfully, competently, and courteously. Nelson County staff knows what is expected of them, and overall, they do their jobs according to those expectations. I believe we've moved the office of the Nelson County clerk forward in a most positive manner. I believe I've proved that I am qualified to do the job of Nelson County Clerk. I have the competence, commitment, and experience needed for the position of Nelson County Clerk. Every vote is of utmost importance. Please vote on May 20th for Elaine Filiakko. And now closing statements from Jeanette Hall Sidebottom. Okay. I w just wanted to thank PLG for having us in um, to express our concerns about the clerk's office. I just want the citizens of Nelson County know what I bring to the office. I bring to the office my compassion to serve. I am here for long term. I have no issues to stop me from giving 100% of my time to accomplish uh, this position. I will improve customer service, flexible work hours, and we will have more detailed training which consists of a better understanding of what customer service is about. We will fo focus on the individual matters and realize everyone's needs are not the same. We're going to be able to relate personally with all the citizens of Nelson County. We will have a welcoming environment. We will have a clear focus on working with people to meet your needs. I will run a highly efficient office with employees that will have the citizens of Nelson County's best interests in mind, and you will be treated with respect. I will ensure all the needs of Nelson County citizens are met as promptly and accurately as the law allows. I have the heart to serve as well as the experience and the desire. I know what needs to be done, and I can and I will do it. It has been a pleasure to work and serve in this county. Our county has been fortunate to have, to have had great leaders in the past that have served and I not only want to continue that, but I want to push a little further and provide great customer service that we can all be proud of. Most everything in this office is government regulated, therefore, changes will be few but noticeable. I have been blessed to have so much support, and I would like to thank everyone. It has been truly overwhelming. I would like to ask for your vote on May the 20th, ballot number two, Jeanette Hall Sidebottom as your new Nelson County Clerk. Your vote will be appreciated. Thank you. And that will do it for tonight's Nelson County Clerk live debate here on PLG TV 13. That being said, if you're watching this on Tuesday, May the 6th, it is live. However, we are having several reshowings of this debate. The first reshowing will be next Tuesday evening, May the 13th, 
That will be at the same time, 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. And all the PLG debates this week will be re-shown in order for a debate marathon, if you will, on Sunday, May the 18th. This one to be shown at 2 p.m. on that day. We'd like to thank the candidates, Selene Thuyatru and Jeanette Hall Sidebottom, for joining us this evening. And thanks to the panelists, Kentucky Standard Editor Forrest Berkshire and Kentucky Standard Reporter Casey Good. And a special thanks to our producers, John White and John C. Gritton, doing a mighty fine job on the cameras and microphones this evening. I'm Matthew Fogel, and be sure to join us tomorrow evening from 7 to 8 p.m. as we will host a live debate for Nelson County District 4 Magistrate. And then join us on Thursday from 7 to 8 p.m. as we host a live debate for Nelson County Sheriff. Once again, if you would like to submit a question for either debate, you can email us at plg at plgtv.com. Once again, that email address, plg at plgtv.com. And most importantly, be sure to go out to the polls and vote on Tuesday, May the 20th. Thank you for joining us on PLG TV 13 and have an excellent evening.